and his family live in the spotlight, especially since Christian Brando was accused of killing his sister's boyfriend. Even so, very few people know what the superstar's clan is really like behind closed doors. Our Mike Watkins spoke to someone who does. Sultry Shirley Campanis says she's had a wild affair with a man whose family name is synonymous with sex, scandal, and the silver screen. A sizzling relationship with a man by the name of Brando. Christian, that is. Christian was one of the best lovers I ever had. He knew how to please a woman. He really cared how the woman feels, and he was very passionate. I don't think I can go into any more detail on air. <laughs> She says her relationship with the now-accused killer began in Tahiti in the fall of 1987, when Christian, his best friend Bill Cable, and Cable's wife at the time, Shirley Campanis, were vacationing on Marlon Brando's private island paradise. Shirley and Bill were having marital problems, so Shirley says she turned to the young Brando for solace. Well, Billy and I, we were fighting a lot. We were having a lot of problems, and uh, Christian was with me. He was very sympathetic to me, and, um, you know, we spent a lot of time together. We would take walks on the island. There was no one on the island. There were a lot of huts, a lot of places to get lost in. We made love. <laughs> and that was only the beginning. For Shirley says she soon found out what started as merely a fun-in-the-sun fling with Christian would eventually make even white wine blush. A nine-month romp with the now-accused murderer and a peek inside one of the most reclusive families in show business. A first-hand glimpse at the many appetites of the Brando men. He was very careful when he spoke about his father. I think it was a love-hate relationship. Um, he told me a funny story once. Uh, he walked into his father's den and... Um, he said, I saw my pop floating, and I said, what do you mean, floating? And I started to, like, laugh, and he said, he said, honey, it's not funny. He said, I saw my pop floating in midair. Why do you think he's number one? He's from another place. But Campana says the weirdness didn't stop there, especially when it came to the Brando's favorite pastime, women. She says these stories are more like feature-length films, romantic thrillers with Christian and his father, Marlon, battling over the leading roles and the leading ladies. Christian said to me once uh, that he had made love to a couple of Marlon's women, and I asked him, has it ever been the other way around? He said, oh, no. <laughs> but Shirley says it was a different story the very first time she met Marlon. He was flirting with me very heavily. He was, like, pacing around me. So I finally just looked and I glared at him and I thought, oh my God, that's Marlon. <laughs> I recognized him. He was an older Marlon, but it was Marlon. Campana says the desire for women is not the Brando's only appetite. She says Hollywood heavyweight Marlon also packs a powerful hunger for Brando burgers. He'd order about a dozen and just love to eat those hamburgers. In this month's Penthouse magazine, Shirley shares what she says are some secrets of her intimate relationship with Christian and speculates what she thinks really happened in the Brando house on May 17th when Christian allegedly murdered his half-sister's lover and turned a very private household into a roaring public spectacle. Cheyenne was on LSD, Christian was high. Perhaps, uh, you know, she exaggerated and in his mind, you know, it, it exaggerated even more. and. I think a lot of people in their life have had moments of insanity or you say, I'm going to kill somebody. But to actually pull the trigger is another story. For now, she says her relationship with Christian is over. He's now an accused killer, and his half-sister, Cheyenne, is institutionalized in Tahiti. The fact that so much tragedy has struck the Brando home is a mystery to most. But Campana says, at least in Christian's case, it may have been fate. He never had an adult to look up to in his whole life. You know, because I used to ask him, uh, I asked him one time, uh, wasn't it a relief when your father came and got you from your mom? Because he had shared a lot of things 
you know, about his childhood with his mother. And he said to me, honey, that was like going from one nightmare to the next. We'll be back in a moment.